cats are one of the few animals to ever self-domesticate themselves. That's because they've always been adored, even worshipped. They were treated like royalty back then, and cats today are still on top. And if you want to get a little claw machine of your own, you've come to the right place. Congratulations! You're gonna learn the ins and outs and in-betweens, so you'll be ready when a cat chooses to adopt you. For me, my first time cat was a little black boy named Bella. I got her from a cat shelter I used to volunteer at for years. Most people would admire that sort of dedication. Those people were not the ones in charge because they never hired me when I applied for a job there. All five times. But that's alright, I don't hold grudges, even in cases of obvious nepotism. My second cat, one that genetically wears socks, is a little tabby named Era. And during this time, I'm also a cat sitter. And basically, what I do is taking care of cats for people who hit the bloodline lottery and were born into generational wealth, while I, later on in the same day, use the coupon at Dollar Tree. The thing you have to understand about cats is that they're God's perfect killing machine. 42 plus years of evolution for one of nature's most effective murderers. Sharp claws, sharp teeth, keen senses, agility of a cat-like creature, and we pick them up like babies and dress them up for Halloween. Before you get a cat, you have a few decisions to make. You could buy or adopt. Buying from a breeder could be a bit sketchy. I personally wouldn't recommend to buy a pet the same way you would buy a used crack Roomba. And also for all these reasons, but the Roomba thing is easier to visualize, so let's go with that. When you choose to adopt, you're gonna go through a shelter. You might be surprised by what you see inside, so just a heads up. The conditions in these shelters aren't always the greatest. They're underfunded and severely overpopulated. Everyone in there is practically stacked on top of each other. You walk into a room full of sad eyes looking up at you as if you were some sort of messiah sent to save them from this cruel joke of a reality. And don't even get me started on the paperwork. Aside from the time it takes to choose one, it could take a really long time to adopt. Even years. And the worst part of it is that, um, oh, wait, oh, okay. Sorry about that, folks. I, I got my script notes mixed up. That was for my adopting a child video. Okay, here we go. I got the right one. <clears throat> Yeah, the shelter I got my cats from had heated floors. Another thing to consider is personality. Most kittens are really playful and affectionate, but much like a human teenager that starts to collect knives, they could switch up their personality pretty quickly into adulthood. That's why if you get an adult cat, that personality they have is pretty much set in. It's not genetics or science or anything, they simply can't be bothered to change it up. Observe this cuddly scale I made while my Pop-Tarts were burning in the microwave. In the top right, we have a cat that stays away, less cuddly, the one non cat owners think cats are like all the time. They keep to themselves. In the bottom right, we have a cat that stays away but comes to get pet and leaves. They show affection in their own way, such as staying in the same room that you're in. In the top left, we have a very cuddly cat all the time. Always around, loves to snuggle, has a very short list of don'ts. And in the bottom left, we have the cuddliest of cats, because it's a freeloader that expects society to give it all the handouts it wants without caring about how it affects the economy and the greater good. <sighs> this used to be such a great country. Back then, for the ones that were like this, we used to grab them and... Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Yeah, sorry, that joke was written by one of our more, um, age challenge writers, so, so skipping ahead. In the middle, we have cats. All cats. Every single cat. Because they're all over the place, and this chart, just like the Cats movie, was a complete waste of time. Cats are not like dogs, and that's why dog people don't like them. They can't treat them the same because they're too ignorant to break out of their canine echo chambers. But let me ask you, how would you like it if some random stranger started petting your head with the enthusiasm of a sugar-starved child finding his mom's secret candy? Dogs are touch-starved 24-7, so they absolutely love that. Try that with a cat and you win a new opening on your body. And that's why cats are more like people, but they're not and that's why they're great. If you're scared of getting scratched, check out this neat equation I made to assess your risk. And if you're still anxious over keeping your precious skin intact and also evil, you might consider declawing your cat. Don't. Declawing is like cutting off the tips of their fingers. They get stressed easily because they feel unsafe all the time. It's inhumane and cruel for a bunch of reasons but also because they can't make a proper fist that way and therefore they can't win a bar fight. Your cat should keep their claws so they feel that they could defend themselves. But sometimes even that's not enough. That's why you should make the smart decision and buy your cat a gun, male or female. Honestly, doesn't matter if the cat is spayed slash neutered, which they should be unless you want the furry equivalent of a hormonal human teenager running around. Eh, no. Actually, a hormonal human teenager would be better compared to dogs, who just hump whatever the closest thing is. Horned up cats, on the other hand, they just yell really loudly. Either way, it really doesn't matter what gender your cat will be, because you'll still snarkily correct people when they call your male cat a she. Okay, so you got a cat now. Congrats! But what now? 
Well, before you could give it the home Wi-Fi password so it could look up the ongoing catastrophes happening in this hellfire of a world we live in, you gotta give them a name. You can name them after an object, a physical characteristic of theirs, a pun. Name them after your favorite character. But if you want to be weird about it, you can give them a normal human name too. Just make sure it's not a name that sounds like a name you'd potentially date in the future. Trust me, it gets weird. What are you gonna feed them? Normal, average, boring looking dry food versus the mouth watering, eye dilating, liquid ecstasy that is wet food. Cats go crazy for wet food. This is because they could suffer from an affliction known as hungry. Not hunger, hungry. There is no difference to them. A cat can be far away, who knows where, but they sprint fast enough to win medals as soon as they hear that can open. That's when their primal senses take over. They pace back and forth, they yell at you, they try to assault your leg, begging just to try to get their next fix. They might even light up a smoke right then and there and... Uh, not again. Sorry, I, I really gotta organize these script notes better. That was for my local train crackhead video. But now that I think about it, they're basically the same thing. Cats are hydro homies. You can get a bull or fancy found for them, either is fine, but one is more fun looking than the other. Normal cats drink by scraping the water up with the rough curved surface of their tongue. It's like having many, many, many personal soup ladles. Very useful. Sometimes they lick from their wet paws to get that which Nestle employees sell their soul over. Then you could get one that treats their drinking water like it's their own personal water park, completely disregarding that many places in the world don't have clean drinking water. They're gonna do great at their Nestle job interview. Oh yeah, and some cats choose to defy God and drink from the faucet. Cats need to go, and since they refuse to get potty trained, they go in boxes. There are different types of boxes, each with a different degree of laziness involved on your part. Although you'll shell out for the pricey ones as soon as you accidentally touch their used litter. There are different types of litter you could get them. If you're unfortunate enough, which you just might be, to get a cat that's super picky about where they do their business, don't worry. All you have to do is simply cave into their demands. You are a hostage here. You have no power. They might want a specific texture, smell, atmosphere. If everything is not perfect, they'll go elsewhere and enact a protest and play the victim as they stare at you for letting them down. Even if you have everything perfect for your cat, the one natural instinct ingrained in every single cat's DNA is that they are hardwired to use the litter box as soon as you finish cleaning it. If you catch them staring at the most intelligent animal picking up after them, that means the natural order of things is right. Keep cats inside, please. They're public enemy number one in nature. Much like their caretakers, they are personally responsible for wiping out an immense number of wildlife and have vastly contributed to bring the total number of species on the planet down. Their most common victim are the government drone devices known as birds. You might be thinking to yourself, that's a good thing. No, that's your tax money. And the government's just gonna make more it's nothing more than a bandage on a more serious problem there. Anything can happen to a cat when it goes outside. It's like letting a child go out whenever they want. It's dangerous out there. There are multi-ton killing machines racing by all around. Government drones out for tasty revenge. The cruelest among us. It's scary enough that we ourselves willingly choose to go outside. Why would you put something you love in that much potential unnecessary danger? They don't have to go outside. I don't care what any of the boomers say, cats should 100% be kept indoors. Please, there is no joke here. Just keep your pets inside to keep them safe. It's that simple. It's important for your cat to be stimulated. That's why they love to play. And the best toys are the ones that activate their hunting instincts. Get them to practice pouncing practice swatting, kicking their feet to break some poor sap's neck. So many different kinds of toys to choose from, but one of the most successful is one with a string and a piece of cardboard. The most popular one is definitely the product of years and years and years of scientific struggles and breakthroughs, the laser pointer. While it may be funny seeing them run around everywhere, chasing something they can never truly possess, it's important to let them catch something in the process so they don't get too stressed from not being able to hunt. Like how God lets you get a match every now and then on Tinder. And if you want to enhance the experience, you could give them catnip, which is the answer to the question, what if you can combine every single drug together and give it to a cat to make sure they destroy everything in their path while playing? Or they get absolutely stoned out, no in between. Unlike myself, because I don't have insurance, it's important to keep your cat healthy. An annual checkup gives you the opportunity to keep your cat for as long as possible. It's crucial that they have their shots up to date, including the rabies one, also because that's the law in most places. And there's a reason for that. Rabies is heckin' scary. After symptoms appear, it has the highest mortality rate of any disease. You can tell if rabies has set in if they're vomiting, 
agitated, anxious, confused, hyperactive, telling you they'll do anything for $20 and... Uh, sorry, wrong script again. Anyway, it's better to prevent all that than to deal with all that. For most cats, the act of being forced to go outside is a terrifying ordeal, so they run as soon as they see the cat carrier. Pro tip, leave it out for them as a bed or something so they don't associate it with a trip to the vet. It's like using your invoices and receipts as pillows so you're not as anxious when it's tax time. Luckily for me, I don't have to worry about that since it is my religious belief that taxes aren't real. But Leas, I hear you saying, my cat seems fine. I don't really have to take them to the dock, do I? In which I say, what are you doing? Get out of here. This is my video. This isn't an AMA. What the heck, man? Anyway, cats, much like myself, are very good at hiding pain. They seem fine on the outside, but there could be some bad stuff going on underneath. That's how you know when something's wrong, too. When something comes out of them that shouldn't. There are different kinds of cat medicine, but the methods to administer them are pretty much the same as human meds. But theirs taste a whole lot better. Shots, not a problem. They got loose skin and don't keep track of politics, so they don't feel it. Oral meds, on the other hand, usually have to hide it in their food, like someone on a diet hides lettuce in their Big Mac. Or you might have to wrap them in a burrito against their will if they have to take it straight in their mouth. There's definitely a better way I could have said that, but I couldn't think of one, so we're keeping that. And then there's creams and... Well, I, I don't want to talk about them. Once again, cats are hydro homies. It's important that they get water because they are especially prone to kidney issues. Do not, under any circumstances, no matter how much they beg, do not give them alcohol. Not just because it's dangerous, but because they're lightweights and are the first to knock out at any party. That's why they should always be your designated driver. Cut your cat's nails for the same reason you don't wear a tux to Subway. Don't want to be too sharp. Cats practice for their baker dreams in an act known as kneading. This is when they're at their peak happiest. It is an absolute honor when they choose to perfect their craft on you. But it's best that you're not in pain during so you don't get up and ruin all their hard work. Okay, now the first day of having the cat is over. You successfully snuck them in after not telling your landlord because pet rent is dumb. Now it's time for bed. The thing about sleeping with a cat nearby is that you're following Minecraft sleep rules. If the cat is up, you're up. They're living the American dream and are sleeping 12 to 16 hours a day, most likely when you aren't. So you wake up to the sound of something falling and you just think, ah, that's a problem for morning me. You wake up to a cat aggressively licking themselves, getting the smell of human off them. Or in the most terrifying of situations, you hear them howling at a cat outside. You have no idea what's going on if it's your first time. You wake up in a cold sweat to that. Then you turn on the lights. Your cat's hair is up. Their tail is the poofiest you've ever seen them. They're freaking out. Meanwhile, the cat outside is looking in like, even after the outside cat leaves, it takes a bit for yours to calm down. And then, in the best case scenario, you could wake up to purring. Your cat is beside you, all snuggled up. And for just a moment, everything is all right until your alarm goes off and wakes them up. As you're getting ready for work, you see your cat sleeping again. You try to take a quick picture, but they roll over and show their belly. And you're so lost in the moment that you forget to take the picture. And that's why it's hard to leave a cat behind for work. Never look back at the door as you close it. That's when you get jealous of all the people that get to work from home. Most problematic cat issues can easily be solved by offering a replacement. Scratching furniture? Get more scratchers near it. Getting into high places you don't want them to be? Get a cat tree. Rowdy? Tire them out by playing. Stealing from charity? Buy them a puzzle game to distract them. Going to the bathroom where they shouldn't be? Get another litter box. Instead of finding a problematic cat to old tweets to cancel them, get some tape instead. They hate it. <laughs> Almost as much as. If you get fancy, expensive furniture for them, they're just gonna prefer the box. Yeah, you can walk your cat outside. It's kinda weird, but hey, you're just quirky like that. Or you can be lazy about it and get them a cat stroller. There are videos out there, videos for cats, that you could play them on their iPads. Much like most children under the age of two, it's meant to distract them while you're doing stuff. And if you really wanna humble them and take them down a notch, put on a video of cats meowing in a different room and watch your cat freak out trying to find the intruders. If you have a cat, go do this right now. Well, wait, not, not right now, after the video.
One cat's stare at nothing, that could just be a tiny spider they're tracking. Or ghosts. When a cat has their tail raised, avoid making direct eye contact out of respect, even though they don't show that same respect towards you. If your cat is walking between your legs, you gotta be careful, because you're accidentally gonna step on their paws. And if that happens, it's tradition to fall on your knees and beg for their forgiveness, stopping short of committing Sudoku. If a cat is chirping at a window, they're just talking smack to the birds. Or trying to send death threats in Morse code. If a cat is blinking at you, that is a sign of affirmation. And be sure to do it back, just to tell them, no, you. If you get caught in a staring contest, I'm just gonna save you the trouble and tell you to give up. You will lose. Yeah, don't give your cat a bath unless you want police called on you because the neighbor heard what sounded like animal abuse. Only in the most extreme of situations should you be bathing your cat. In which case, you should do it with your least favorite hand. The biggest takeaway you could get from this is that cats are great. Certainly better than kids. And yeah, you might get scratched or bent or thrown up on, and you help the lint roller industry stay alive, and yeah, you clean up after the messes, but then you see a lost cat poster outside, and you think of your own, and you treasure them while you can, because they're precious, and you love them, and they love you. Even though they take less time than a dog would to decide to eat our corpse.